and welcome back to another installment of Electric Sheep Labs video tutorials. Today we're going to fix a problem that I've been dealing with for a long time now and we're going to get me a voice recorder. Okay, this camera actually doesn't have uh, very good audio and it doesn't even have an external mic jack so I can't plug in a microphone. Um, so we're going to fix all that today or at least start uh, trying to by making our own audio recorder with, as you can see, the Arduino Mega and a little uh, SD card reader uh, shield for it and then some amplification circuitry. So um, before we go into uh, the circuitry and have a little bit of fun with this, I want to talk about analog to digital converters. So how do computers talk to the real world? So in the, in the world we deal with smooth, uh, smooth signals, you know, say this is some intensity of a signal, it could be my voice, it could be light. The computer's ability to take signals from our world and turn them into computer information and into bits or into bytes of information is dependent on its sample frequency. So uh, frequency is, uh, goes like the inverse of the period in between these samples. And it also, uh, the quality is dependent on how small these steps can be. So the computer's going to chop the signal up into little tiny pieces and uh, the, the quality is going to be based on how fast it can chop and what uh, resolution, what, uh, what the smallest step is that it can chop to. So there's multiple methods of doing this. Um, one is called the successive approximation. The successive approximation method for analog to digital conversion. And so the way this works is I'm going to copy off of this diagram. Okay, so here's a, a very rough diagram. Comparator, 8-bit digital analog converter, the SAR chip, and an 8-bit eight, eight output bus that goes to the microcontroller. And so what happens here is we have some input waveform. And we want to sample this thing and read its values, its digital values, out to a microcontroller. Okay, so assume that there's some clock and that there's a there's a limited speed that this whole that this uh, successive approximation network can take a reading. Now let's just focus on the reading portion of what's happening. So say I input, I sample somewhere along a waveform here, and it's I don't know 3.6 volts. So the reference voltage we'll say is like our maximum voltage, and it's and in this case on the Arduino it's five volts. The the eight bit DAC is going to output half of that, so 2.5 volts and the comparator compares the 3.6 to the 2.5 and in this case the 3.6 is greater than the 2.5 we get a 1 that's the most significant bit okay and then it's going to iterate back and say okay if it's greater than that then how about I cut this uh, reference voltage in quarters so 125 so we get a 3.75 as our voltage reference and it comes in here to the comparator and says, okay, is my input voltage of 3.6 greater than or less than the 3.75? And of course it's less than, so we get a zero on that, on that output. The 3.75 is now, uh, that reference voltage uh, yielded a zero. And so again, these bits are passed back into the 8-bit DAC and then it, it then send its next, sends its next guess which is would be 3.75 minus since it's a zero and we so we want to go below we want to try to uh, fall below the uh, input value um, it'll be 3.75 minus 0.625 because that's 5 divided by 8 and so that value is compared so um, so the next value is 3.125 and our input voltage is greater than that so we get another one and so this this met, this iteration method keeps going for however many bits your uh, um, SAR is resolving to. And in our case, with the Arduino, I think it's a 10-bit. I should probably have a 10 here, I guess. <laughs> and I think it's a 10-bit DAC as well. Which is why, if you've ever played around with Arduino, your analog input values are 0 to 1024. Because 2 to the 10th is 1024. So in any case, the SAR, this, the successful approximation 
method is just a guessing game. It's just, a, a, well, it's a smart guessing game where the signal approximation register uh, talks to an 8-bit, or talks to a DAC and uh, just uses a comparator on your analog input to um, hone in on the value that you're looking for. And so here, I actually, uh, here's a nice print off from the guys that, that write Art of Electronics. Uh, this is just a screenshot from that book. If you haven't uh, heard about that or um, read it ever, you should check it out. That's like the, I guess, accepted as the Bible or handbook of electronics. So it's a really great, um, really great reference. You, you, don't, you don't have to read through. It's pretty dense, pretty, uh, really dense material. So, it, but it's super handy, super useful to have. And in this case, um, very nice graphics here. We have um, in the top right, you can see this is a scope trace of an 8-bit successive approximation DAX analog output converging to the final value. So as I was saying before, the where we, we were guessing, we went from 2.5 to 3.75 to 3.125. So that was us honing in on our value of 3.6. And in this case, we have uh, the DAC is honing in on some value. You can see it. it guesses in the middle and then okay no my value is greater so it uh, the DAC tries a greater value that's another division divide by two and then oh no we're below it oh above it below above boom 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 and it hones in on eventually the output value um, so that's a cool little info graphic and uh, here's a little um, snapshot that shows you the full the full scale like this looks kind of like a tournament bracket uh, for I don't know the March Madness but um, in this case, it's all the different paths that the uh, DAC can take. Basically, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bit. There's eight divisions here. Yeah, so here's a print off of, uh, print off from the at mega, um, from the at mega 328 data sheet. And this is the uh, ADC section where they use a successive approximation, um, which is, I guess, the reason we were talking about it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so there's these are all the analog inputs that I, I'm assuming are chosen by this multiplexer. Um, you know, given the one that you want to read, it'll uh, send through the ADC value, the value on that in analog input pin. And again, that goes to this comparator. And the comparator has the input of the analog signal and a 10-bit DAC, which is this this symbol right here. And uh, that the output of that comparator is fed into is block conversion logic. I yeah, not sure what all is going on here, but this is this is essentially the thing that's holding on to those ones and zeros, to those uh, bits that we're um, recording as we iterate through the successive approximation method. And so you can see there's an arrow here. So that conversion logic is feeding back into the DAC. So the DAC can make its smart guess. And then, of course, back into the comparator. And so you can, these are ADCH and ADCL are um, literally just registers in the circuitry of the processor that you can access. Um, and you can access those values of the ADC. So with that being said, that's a lot of boring stuff. Let's OK, so we want to record audio using the analog inputs and the successive approximation uh, ADC on with this Ardu inside this Arduino and we want to record it with this little electret microphone. This microphone uh, sends out s small electrical signals proportional to the SPL, the sound pressure level um, in the room, aka the audio, the my voice. And so uh, we need to amplify those small signals into something that uh, makes sense for the Arduino. So let me explain. The VREF is 5 volts. That's the, that's the highest value um, that the analog input can receive. And the lowest value is zero. We don't want to do put negative voltage into our Arduino's pin. And so we want to have a signal that is somewhere in that region. And uh, so what we're going to do is amplify the signal. So it goes from something on the order of millivolts to the full range, ideally, the zero to five volts, so that we can get the best uh, sampling of that signal, the best quality sample. And um, we also want to offset the voltage so that, uh, offset the signal so that when there's 
no audio, it's basically centered around 2.5. So this circuit, um, to the keen observer, you'll notice it is very poorly constructed as we have not one, but two potentiometers. The reason uh, this is bad is because the circuit is dependent on the potentiometer position, which is not really how you design circuits. Um, so noob, noob electronics people throw pots in wherever they can to kind of trim their circuit to work, uh, which is what I did. But um, hopefully I will learn some circuit design in the future and it will not be this bad. So uh, with that being said, here is what we wired up essentially with uh, there's a potentiometer here. So I'll just draw a little arrow. But anyway, here's the microphone and it's got a, a bias voltage on it, bypass capacitor. Um, here's just an op amp that is biased to like the, there's a, a voltage divider here from VCC and ground. And so we've got a, a bias of half VCC here on one input. And so we're amplifying around that with, uh, these are, these values are not the same as the values I used, but you know, uh, I think I have a gain of like, well, again, it's dependent on this potentiometer. So, and then another bypass capacitor and, uh, there's actually the one thing that's not drawn here is there's also a voltage reference that I'm biasing this signal with, which is also <laughs> potentiometer dependent. So there's a potentiometer in here. Anyway, there's like output here and there's a resistor network and voltage reference going to ground. So that's, this is, there's a little bit of extra stuff that we can offset our signal with. And you could probably do that with the offset pins on the op amp. I just haven't gotten there yet. So again, <laughs> more work is needed to make the circuit um, more official, but for now it works. So let me show you that. Okay, so we're scoped up. And so if I sing into it, <whistles> so you can see here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, <whistles> so uh, it's hard for you to see this maybe, but the peak to peak voltage uh, it's about like a, you know, volt and a half, two volts peak to peak with, I don't know, what is that? 80 decibels maybe, or I, I don't know, but it's, uh, as you can see the minimum as well. Uh, uh, so it, it never really dips below a couple millivolts, uh, in the negative, which is good because we don't want to put negative voltage on our analog inputs. Um, the Arduino doesn't like that. So, um, yeah, this is looks like we have enough, uh, enough voltage difference, enough peak to peak voltage to detect it. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and try and put it in the Arduino and see what happens. Okay. Also one more thing before we get going and test this, I just want to show you the SD card reader. This is like a, I don't know, a couple bucks online. I got this little module, um, and it allows me to store data to up to, I think 32 gigabytes of micro SD. Um, removable drives. Um, that is wired into the Mega and it's talking over SPI communication, I believe, which is a communication protocol uh, commonly used with microcontrollers and peripheral um, instrumentation. And um, so, yeah, I have the uh, analog signal coming in here to A5, and I'm actually using a library um, that I found online by Darren Yates. Uh, April 2014, it's in the link in the description. But uh, basically what it does is reads the analog information into a buffer. And that buffer is, there's two buffers that are stored in the flash memory of this uh, chip. And it's actually, there's more in the Mega, which is why I got the Mega, um, because they were saying there's some issues if you have, uh, if you're using an Uno, for example, there's a little bit, um, there's like two kilobytes or something of, of storage. And so you kind of run out of space really quickly. Analog values are being uh, stored into a buffer, and uh, that buffer is 512 bytes long because that's the size of a buffer that the um, SD card likes to read in at any given time. And so what happens uh, very roughly is the buffer is populated, and when it's filled up to 512 bytes, the, <coughs> uh, the storage buffer shifts to a new buffer, so analog values are streamed into that one while the initial buffer dumps its memory into, or dumps its uh, data into the uh, chip. And so using this tool to buffer method, you can 
uh, keep acquiring data while uh, dumping it to a file at the same time. And um, so yeah, go ahead and uh, check out the code in the, uh, the description. It's pretty easy to read. I'll, I'll try to comment it up as best I can. And um, yeah, feel free to use it and distribute it. Okay, so it should be recording now. Uh, mic check, one, two. La la. Larry, anyone? No, it doesn't want to, okay. So that's it, it's done recording. So I have it set on just a t uh, 10 second uh, acquire. And so that should be, that should have stored some data. Let's see, let's see what we got. This is a check. Clint Tease is a Clint Tease. But he's so Clinty, all the teas. Clint. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this was fun. This was really encouraging to see that we could kind of, uh, you know, draw up th how things work and copy off someone else's program and get it to work kind of all in one weekend. It was nice. encouraging. So uh, I'll probably end up soldering the circuit up. I don't know if that'll re remove the noise. Hopefully it will. Um, but if not, uh, I plan on experimenting with other ADCs in the future to make an actual audio recorder because that's the uh, kind of the whole goal of this is to actually use what we make um, and I just want to show you I have a circuit that we'll be using next time or a IC rather it's a PCM 1803 um, ADC and so this is like a not not high end but but pretty pretty standard um, ADC for audio and uh, I'll be wiring that up next time, and I think it has I squared C communication um, that will probably route to like a Raspberry Pi or Arduino or something. And so, yeah, hopefully this gets better as time goes. Um, thanks again for watching, and I'll leave you with this. This has been an Electric Sheep Labs production. Please like, subscribe, and tell a friend. See you next time.